Hello, welcome again guys. So this is our next video in the series. Here we are going to talk about another important thing that is needed for all engineering students or for all higher engineering, higher degree students basically I can say. So this part is nothing but complex numbers. See complex number is basically a particular chapter in applied mathematics one only. There you will study this in detail, but here in this video, I am going to consider only few basic part. Okay. If you remember complex number when you did in 11th standard, you started from scratch with the basics. What is complex number? What is modulus and argument? So in this video, we are going to discuss only that. So what do we mean by a complex number? It's nothing but a complex number is what? It's nothing but a parent of a number system. See, one, two, three. If I say it's natural number. If I say 0, include 0 in that, it becomes whole number. If I include fractions, negative numbers, everything in that, it becomes real number. Above that, we have complex numbers. So if I have a representation that is to be made in terms of real and imaginary part, that can be done in complex number. So a complex number is represented like this. Z is written as x plus iy. Where x is what? x is nothing but real part of z. We represent it like this. Real part of z. And y is nothing but imaginary part of z. Okay? And we write it like this. I am z. That means imaginary part of z. If, remember one thing. I have underlined only y, not i y. So if I have a complex number, just visualize. I have a complex number 2 plus 3i. Then what is real part? 2. What is imaginary part? 3. It's not 3i. Remember this thing very clearly. 3 is imaginary part. Okay. So if I consider this as a complex number, then what is z bar? It is something called conjugate. And z bar is nothing but x minus i y. This is how I write z. I, I know most of you, these students don't write it this way, but I'm writing it this way so as not to get confused with 2. Okay. So z bar is x minus i y. This is something we call as conjugate of a complex number. Conjugate means what? If I have a number as 2 plus 3i, simply change the sign of i. Okay. That becomes conjugate of a complex number. The i term over here is nothing but square root of minus 1. Okay. Alright, so if this is conjugate, what else do we need to know in complex number? The other one is modulus. What is, what is modulus? Modulus is nothing but mod of z and it is represented as x square plus y square. It is given by root of x square plus y square. We also write it as r. This is another representation of a complex number, I mean uh, modulus. You can represent it as small r. So if I consider a complex number, I will write an example over here. If I consider an, a complex number 2 plus 3i, then what is the modulus? Modulus is nothing but square root of real part square. So 2 square it is 4 and imaginary part is 3. 3 square is 9. So this is nothing but modulus of a complex number. Clear? Okay. There is one more thing called as argument or it is also called amplitude of a complex number. This is represented as theta and is given by tan inverse of y by x. Now you guys must be wondering what is argument, what is modulus, alright how, how to find this we know but what is it actually? In reality what do we mean by modulus and argument? That must be your question. So let me answer that question. Let me consider x-axis and y-axis. See, when you write a complex number, you write it like this, x plus i y, right? That complex number z, which is x plus i y, is nothing but basically a coordinate x comma y. And if I plot that particular coordinate on x and y-axis, this basically is called, uh, this is then called as Argon's diagram. Okay, it's simple x-axis, y-axis structure only. Just, just that if we represent a complex number, it is called Argon's plane, Argon's diagram or something like that. Alright, so this is a point which has x coordinate as x and y coordinate as y. So what is the distance of this point from x-axis? 
distance of any point from x axis nothing but its y coordinate and the distance of this point from y axis is its x coordinate that is x now you can clearly see that this is basically a, a kind of a rectangle this side is x this side is y so if it is a rectangle even this side has to be x if this is y then this side also has to be y now i'll do one thing i'll just join this and this also can you see there is a right angle triangle over here i do have a right angle triangle if i say this angle is theta then I can understand two things from here. This line is nothing but, see I am talking about this line. This line is nothing but the distance of this particular point. Which point? Z. Means x, y. It is a distance from origin. And this theta is nothing but the inclination of that point with respect to positive x axis. Clear with this? Okay, now if I, I, I said this is a right angle triangle, okay? So if a right angle triangle comes across to you, the first thing that you think of is Pythagoras theorem. So if this is x, this is y. What according to Pythagoras theorem this distance is going to be? I'm very sure you must be aware. It is nothing but square root of x square plus y square. Now you can understand what is modulus. Modulus, which is represented as small r, is nothing but a distance of a point from origin. Now this theta, let's just look at this. You know trigonometry. What is tan theta? Tan theta is nothing but opposite side divided by adjacent side. That means y, opposite side is y and adjacent side is x. What is theta then? Tan inverse of Is this clear to everybody? So theta is tan inverse of y by x. This is nothing but what we studied in argument. Clear? So what is modulus? What is argument? Is clearly uh, something that can be understood with this particular diagram. Alright. Now let us also consider one more thing. If this is a right angle triangle and I can apply formula for tan theta. Simply we can also apply formula for sin theta and cos theta as well. So if I say what is sin theta from this particular right angle triangle, what will be sin theta? Sin theta is nothing but opposite side divided by hypotenuse. So I can write it as y divided by r. From this you can see I can write y as take r this side. So it will become y as r sin theta. All right. And what is cos theta? Cos theta is nothing but x divided by r. How? Cos theta is what? Adjacent side divided by hypotenuse. So x divided by r. From this I can say x is what? Take r this side. So it will become r. So it's cos theta. Clear? And you must be wondering why I am getting all these things. This is something that will be needed in order to explain different ways I can represent a complex number. See, I am writing z which is a complex number as x plus i y, right? Now I realize that even this x term is something and that x term can be written as, now you must be understanding why I am finding this. So x is basically what? r cos theta. So I can replace this x by r cos theta plus i y. What is y? y is nothing but r sin theta. Can you see? I can take r common. So it's basically r cos theta plus i sin theta. Guys, this is really important for an engineering students. When you write your z as x plus i y, then this is nothing but what we call as Cartesian form of a complex number. If you represent things in x and y, while studying complex number, we call it Cartesian representation of a complex number. And if the same thing is represented with respect to r and theta, that means distance, modulus and an angle, then this is called polar form of a complex number. Clear? So Cartesian is one form, polar is another form. Also there is one thing which you must be aware. Complex number can also be written as z is equal to r e raised to i theta. Now people call it Euler's form or exponential form. 
but I prefer calling it polar form only. Why? Because according to me, what I can understand is, if I am representing things in X and Y, it is Cartesian. If I am representing things in R and Theta, it is polar. So even this representation is what? In terms of R and Theta. So from this I realize that complex number can be expressed in three different ways. Cartesian, polar and polar another form which I can say exponential. Now if I compare these two equations or basically if you consider this with this. Okay, I realize something. See, z is same, equal is same, r is same. That means this e raised to i theta will be what? Cos theta plus i sin theta. So I can write this as e raised to i theta is nothing but cos theta plus i sin theta. Now if this is my complex number, can I write conjugate of it? Yes, certainly we can do that. See, if cos plus i sin is my complex number, cos minus i sin will be its conjugate. And conjugate means what? You just change the sign of i. So in left hand side also I will change the sign of i, so I will get e raised to minus i theta. Okay? Now I will do one thing. I will add these two equations. I am just creating more formulae which will be needed, needed in our curriculum. So if I add these two, now you can visualize. If I add this plus this, then i sin theta minus i sin theta will get cancelled. What I will be left with? Cos plus cos, it will be 2 cos theta. 2 cos theta I will write as cos theta and 2 that side. What will be there in left hand side? This plus this. So that is e raised to i theta plus e raised to minus i theta. Guys remember, this formula is really really important in engineering. Cos theta when, I, when somebody asks you what is formula for cos theta, people tend to answer it like this, cos theta, okay, right angle triangle, cos theta, uh, adjacent side upon hypotenuse. No, that we used to study in 9th standard, 9th or 10th. In engineering, when somebody says what is formula for cos theta, you will say this, e raised to i theta plus e raised to minus i theta divided by 2. Now, what if I need sin theta, then I will do opposite operation on the same thing. So, that is subtracting. Now if I subtract, see, this minus this, it will be e raised to i theta minus e raised to minus i theta and that will be equal to, if you subtract this with this, cos will get cancelled, cos will get cancelled, I will be get left with this, but in, in terms of, I mean, the sign will be positive, right, so it will be i sine plus i sine, that is 2i sine theta, I take that 2i in right hand side, so I get one more formula which is formula for sin theta. So if it is cos theta, it will be plus. If it is sin theta, it is going to be minus over here. The only difference is, here we have divided by 2, here it is divided by 2i. So complex number is really, really important in engineering and these are the basics that you require. One more thing is needed. I'll tell you over here. That's powers of i. See what is i? i is nothing but square root of minus 1. Right? It is square root of minus 1, that's fine. What about i square? If somebody says what is i square, what will be i square? i square is nothing but minus 1 because if you take square of this, square root will vanish. What about i cube? i cube is nothing but, you can write it as i square into i. What is i square? It is minus 1. So minus 1 into i is nothing but minus i. Similarly, if somebody says i raised to 4, what will be i raised to 4? It will be i square into i square. What is i square? It's minus 1. This is also minus 1. Minus 1 into minus 1, it is 1. What about i raised to 5? It will be i raised to 4 into i. What is i raised to 4? It's 1. 1 into i? If you remember these this much, this is this is all, all you need. Because if somebody asks you i raised to any power, it is going to be any of at, at least one of these values. I'll highlight this. Any one of these values. I'll give you an example. If some suppose somebody says, uh, let me write it over here. Uh, I raised to say 77. Suppose you want i raised to 77. 
then I can simplify it like this. See, I raised to 77 can be written as I raised to 76 into I. Agree with this? And this I raised to 76 can be written as I square raised to, now just think of this. Isn't it? 38 to Z 76 into I as it is. Now what is I square? I square is nothing but minus 1. Think of this. I square is minus 1. This is basic. Now minus 1 raised to 38. What is minus 1 raised to even number? Minus 1 raised to even number is always 1. Always 1. And minus 1 raised to odd number? It's always minus 1. This is quite a basic thing that you must be aware. So, this is minus 1, minus 1 raised to even number, it's going to be plus 1, 1 into i, it's going to be i. Can you realize that you have an answer which is among these? See, i. So, you take any power and you can simplify, your answer will be any of these four answers. Clear? So, that's all we have in complex numbers. Hope you have understood the concept. Now, in this series, we'll also cover more topics. Stay tuned. Thank you, guys.